Hey friends, guess who? It is your friend Lisa Mason Ziegler yet again, but today or this, this afternoon, I am being joined by another one of Dave's students. Um, you know, we're, I'm just really loving the fact that we're getting the point of view um, from folks that have taken Dave's course. And it is Brenda of, I love the name of her farm, y'all, Natural State Flower Farm. And once she requests um, down below in the little video with the plus sign to join me here, I will bring her on. And I'm just loving talking to farmers all over the country in different regions. And she's in Arkansas. And I can't wait to hear and learn more about her business and to hear what she kind of thought about Dave's course. Because friends, I know that if you are still checking in with me here, um, you may or may not know that Dave's course enrollment ends tonight at midnight. And um, so we're kind of coming down to the last burning hour here. So if you are there, Brenda, I saw that your name go by. If you just hit the little video at the bottom with the plus sign, then that will send me an invite and I can confirm to bring you on here. And um, we will get started talking to you guys. So I don't know about y'all, but we have a heat wave finally going on here in Virginia. We've been waiting kind of while, quite a while for it. Um, and so we actually are having a heat advisory this afternoon. Um, and so I'm just happy to be inside. Um, up oh, there she is. Oh, maybe that's not her. That's Katie Bell. I am looking for Brenda Emery. I'm looking for Natural State Yes, Natural State Flower Farm. And I am loving the name of her um, her farm. It's like, I instantly think that she's a natural farmer when I read that name. It'll be really fun to find out from her. Um, so, I am looking for Brenda of Natural State Flower Farm. And let me just bring up my phone or my iPad here. Oh, Kelly's talk. Kelly, who's one of our team members, says she's helping Brenda. So they're coming on. So y'all, while we're waiting for Brenda to join us, um, I'm just gonna give you the lowdown details again. Today is the last day up until midnight tonight to enroll in Dave Downing's course. Dave Downing's course is Bulbs, Perennials, Woodies, and more. Um, totally business changing course. Um, it's only offered once a year. You can follow the link in my profile to get to the sales page where it tells you all about what's in the course. The syllabus, you can look at the syllabus. It lists all the crops. There's over 60 flowers, um, bulbs, perennials, and woodies. Actually, I think it's 20 bulbs, 30 perennials and like 20, does that add up? 20 woodies, I think. Um, and no, it's, tw it's 10 woodies. And then the last week's session is on kind of like the introduction to growing in structures, hoop houses, shade houses, greenhouses. Um, and if you're not familiar with Dave Dowling and his teaching, um, Dave is held as one of the um, leading experts in the cut flower industry. I'm not sure if you are familiar. Um, he has been the president of the Association of Specialty Cut Flowers on two or maybe even three occasions, served on the board for years. There is literally a scholarship in his name in the association. Um, so Dave, we like to call him, is the walking encyclopedia. Whether you're talking about growing, um, what to plant, how to plant it, your different options, harvesting, low maintenance, the best way to maintain, the whole enchilada, y'all. And I have just had so much of an eye-opening experience talking to so many of his students. Former student of Dave, he is a walking encyclopedia, amazing class. Sweet Briar Flowers, thank you so much for saying that. I mean, we keep saying it, and it's, it gives me goosebumps, y'all. 
I mean, I've known Dave for 20 years. He and I both started farming about the same time, and we met through the association, especially cut flower growers. And I am telling you, every time we talk about a farming subject, I learn from him. He and I just did two podcasts, one on snapdragons and one on lisianthus, which are the um, our annuals. I learned something new in both of those. You can listen to those at my podcast, um, Flower Farming, um, I'm sorry, Field and Garden Podcast. So is the course international? Cheers from Argentina. Um, it, is, it is all in English, but yes, we have students from all over the world. I mean, we've had South America and Europe, um, South Africa. Just There's just really no limits because one of the things that we really try to resonate in our courses is we don't say, if you live in this kind of area, this is when you plant. We give you the thought process of how to figure out when things should be planted for you. So 100%, we have New Zealand, um, Canada for sure. Um, and so yes, it is an international. We have students from all over the world. Um, and I don't know what problem. Um, so Kelly is our actually our course coordinator. Um, she is working with Brenda to get her on here. You can also, so I've been um, talking, I talked on Friday night, which unfortunately Instagram nixed our video with Katie um, of Simple Bloom, wasn't it Simple Bloom? Simple Farm Flowers. Had a great discussion with her. It's just so interesting to listen to people say, yes, I started farming, um, and then I took most of them, I think all of them that I've talked to actually took my class first, um, and then took Dave's course, and it's like, what a confidence builder to have somebody there to say, first off, you only want to try two or three perennials this year, two or three next year. You don't just plant a bunch of different ones. He coaches you on how you plant fewer diversity with more volume and small steps build up your um, your farm inventory. Charlotte says, great course worth taking by everyone who grows a single bed of tulips or a row of shrubs and perennials. I am constantly reviewing this course. So that is, thank you, Charlotte, so much. Um, we do say that this course, this specific course, bulbs, perennials, and woodies, is definitely a course that is beneficial even if you're just like an avid gardener. I was going to say a flower junkie, but you know, there's a lot of those too, right? Those people that, I mean, we have so many customers that just by grow so many flowers. Lisa, do you see Brenda? She, oh, there you go. All right, here she is. And that with us and um, I can't wait for us. So I've hit, I've accepted her. Oh, there hey. she is. Hi, Brenda. So glad to have you join you. us here today. We're really excited to talk hot. to you. How's the it weather in Arkansas? It's 11 o'clock. It is hot. <laughs> well, we are climbing up. I think ours, we're not quite into the 90s yet. And um, we have a heat yeah, advisory fine. coming on this afternoon. And um, so, but it you is. know, that's kind of farming, right? We just take whatever it does. So thank you so much for joining me here. And before I talk to you and ask you a few questions about what you think about what you, what you learned in Dave's course and how it helped you, we want to learn more about you and your farm. So tell us, the, and I love the name of your farm, by the way. I that was totally in love with that when I first saw it. Um, tell us where you're located, how big your farm is, and kind of what's uh, going on out Northwest there with Arkansas. you. We're in Arkansas. Uh, we have a hundred acres, although we, we, it's mostly wooded. We live in the Ozark mountain range, so it's very hilly and very rocky. So we just have select patches that we can grow on. Um, but we, I live in a town that's 75 people. And <laughs> oh my goodness. Of that, I like to say, but, but Northwest Arkansas has about half a million people <laughs> in it. And so it's a big market, um, for for us is for, for growing. So tell me first off, 
before you embarked on flower farming, what kept your days full? What was, did you have a career or what? Yes, I was a dental hygienist for 37 years and I couldn't take it anymore. <laughs> and so I That's awesome. So how did you learn about a flower farm? And I mean, what made you aware that it was even a career I, choice? I was listening to a podcast and I had a 50 minute drive every day. And so I always listened to podcasts and someone mentioned flower farming. And I thought that's a thing. That's really a thing. And the more I delved into it, I found your course, I found your website and I just took the leap, invested in myself and took the class and never looked back. That is so awesome. So what I, year did I, you start? I started in 2016, but I didn't, I just, I didn't sell anything. I just kind of practiced growing. We, I grew up on a commercial tomato farm, so I knew about farming, but I didn't really know how the flower farming thing went. So I was practicing succession planting, things like that uh, for the first year. That was so smart. So Seven, I'm still I'm still thinking about 75 <laughs> yeah. people in your town. I mean, that's what's in my neighborhood. <laughs> that, it is. So with that in mind, tell us how you sell your flowers. What do you sell well, your, who I'm, do you sell I'm your flowers to? I'm always active on Instagram. And so I always, and I always grew flowers and I always put flowers on my Instagram. And once you start tagging, um, put some tags like wedding designers of Northwest Arkansas of your wedding designers. And then they see that I went through social media and, and saw the tags they were following. And I, you know, put those tags in my post and I got a lot of interest in that. I, I first tried to go with florist. Um, we have three florists in a town about 15 minutes from me. Um, they just weren't, I don't think they really knew what to do with local flowers mm -hmm. and I, and I really couldn't grow the volume they wanted to grow, wanted me to grow. And so I, I kind of switched gears and started targeting the wedding designers. And that's been a really uh, beneficial asset for my business. You know, first off, I mean, how smart are you tagging your posts? and seeking out, I mean, so, I mean, you're going to become my poster child for like probably <laughs> the most rural person I have ever spoken to. <laughs> 75 people in your town. Yeah. And you have found customers to sell to. So I think that is so awesome. You are so smart. So tell us, so how big is the space that you're growing in? You know, tell us a little bit about how that kind of progressed for you. Well, I, I started um, the field that we grew tomatoes in. My dad is still living on that farm, and he wanted me to grow something. So that's where I practiced my first year. That's not, it was three miles from my house. It doesn't seem far, but when, when you're having to go back and forth, it's far. And so we decided to, to fence off part of our cow pasture, and it's about half an acre. And I didn't, so I didn't grow in the whole thing. I just took it in baby steps and just, you know, did bits and pieces throughout the summer. You know, would you not say that bits and pieces and baby steps is perhaps the easiest way to do the long haul success Absolutely. story? Absolutely. I'm, I'm 59. I can't do a whole lot. <laughs> you know? I'm right there with you, girl. I'm 61, <laughs> I so I understand. Yeah. Well, that's why I like Dave's class. It kind of, I, my goal is to gradually get more perennials where I can, um, I don't have to be sewing things all the time. I can rely on the perennials. Uh, that's my long-term goal is to have the perennials to fall back on. I don't have to replant them every year and I kept on them every year. You know, and I'm so glad you used that word long-term goal that you're the third student. I've talked to four, four or five of Dave's students and two others also said the long term one was a mom of like three boys that were like eight, 10 and 12. And she said, I mean, like, I'm so busy with my kids. And she like you dabbled at first, you know, did a little practice and realized that she just didn't have a lot of time. And so she said that, um, so let's just talk about Dave's course a little bit then. So she also kind of um, alluded to the fact 
that Dave's course allowed her to look a little bit further ahead and to do some of the work that will pay off later. Is that what you also found? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So Dave would be proud. I planted peonies. I planted about 150 peonies the first season. His <laughs> nose is probably itching right now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and so that way I took his advice and did that. Uh, that's been um, probably five years, four or five years ago. And, and that's, that's definitely been a plus for my business as well. And they're, they're so easy to grow and, and, you know, they sell themselves. It's true. And, you know, I think one of the things that um, he and I were taught, we, we actually, he and I did an Instagram live at 7 a.m. this morning. He was barely <laughs> breathing, you know. <laughs> so one of the things that we talked about um, was, you know, he is, as you mentioned, he is such a peony pusher. He yes. thinks that anybody that thinks you're going to be in this for, you know, the five-year haul, definitely get some peonies in the ground. And so he was telling me last week, and which is what we talked about this morning, is the way that you plant peonies in landscape fabric. And yes. when he told me his method of cutting yeah. the X, yeah, did you do that? I did. So and nice. I mean... How many people do you see on social media that burn those big yes. holes yes. to plant their peonies in, and then they have to hole weed constantly, constantly, yeah, year after year? And it's like, my yeah. gosh, that was like the bomb gem of the day when he told. I agree. Me. Yeah. So, wouldn't you agree? It's that kind of information that is blooming priceless about Dave Downing. Yes. Yes. I would have never thought to do it in landscape fabric. Um, I've grown peonies and I've never even entered my mind to do that. And this all his little tip. One of the things I did learn from him, which I didn't know, is that the peonies set their blooms in August. And I never watered my peonies until I heard that. And then that's been a game changer as well. That's something else I'd, I'd never thought of. Yeah, that's a great point. So in July and August of this year, even though your mm -hmm. plants don't have anything going on, mm -hmm. that's when they, they need that water to make next year's buds. These are the kind of things that, you know, change your life about growing yep. something, right? The difference between yep. success and um, not failure but just not the result that you perhaps thought that you would. So Dave's class has like 60 ball, 60 different flowers in it. Mm -hmm. And so where are you in, are you still adding things and one or two things every year or so? Oh, what's yeah. go, so what, what's kind of been your strategy that you learned? Well, the first year I planted the peonies and the daffodils, especially daffodils. Um, then I planted um, Echinops and some, uh, alliums, which I've always loved, but I've got probably four or five different alliums that I've planted. Um, plus um, the willows, curly willows. Mm. So every year I try to add something. Um, this year I added lavender. So it's it's just I try not to overdo it. I'm really bad about that. So I'm trying to pace myself <laughs> uh, to do that just a little bit every year. And, you know, you're not alone in that. We are, because we're all drawn to this profession because we are gardeners and we love flowers, it is really hard to hold yourself back. Um, I was talking to another one of his students, Nicole Pitt, and um, Nicole was saying that the hardest part for her is holding herself back. Yeah. I mean, you just learn, and she said, so she was totally stoked that this coming year she was adding alliums and um, mm -hmm. a couple other things and you know you just don't understand that instead of planting a little bit of a bunch of different stuff you're so much business wise smarter to plant more volume of fewer things and just take it one step at a time yes so what would you say was perhaps the was there anything surprising that you learned in Dave's course that was like oh my gosh who knew that well, growing in crates, yes. I never, that never entered my mind. And I had the crates from the daffodils. So I, I tried anemones, um, the tulips. I just, I had a hoop house that I got last summer, which I'm still learning, 
but I, I just put them in the crates and put them outside. They were easy to water. They were right by my shop. And I, I did much better the, than the anemones in the field did great, but the tulips were taking all my time and they were blooming at the same time. And I don't, it's just me. So um, having the crates handy right there by the shop made all the difference. Yeah, I totally agree with you. I remember when I learned to grow in crates from him, and I mean, I went all hog wild with tulips and lilies yes. because just like you said, the whole backside of this building I'm standing in up against the building, which was, per was graveled, I couldn't grow anything there until I learned about crates, not to mention I had a real vole problem who ate bulbs and all of that is eliminated. So, um, yeah. so Dave, as he goes through the crops, he kind of tells you like the best ways to grow the different crops or what your options are, right? Mm -hmm. Right, right. Um, so do you think the course is worth it? People oh, that absolutely. are watching this right now either haven't signed up or they're on the fence. Yeah. So tell I, us what I you think. think. I think it is. I, I'm the worst person to invest in myself. And these courses were an investment in myself and in my business, in my long-term goals. And I, I, the, the, the fact I can go back and look at it anytime I want to, if I have a question, because I, I didn't grow everything at once. So I didn't, I kind of glossed over some of the things I was going to skip that year. But I can always go back and watch those. They're not very long, so you're not spending, you know, 30 minutes on one thing. It's it's a five or right. ten minute uh, little snip that you can get immediately and go from there. Right. And so what she's speaking of, so the online courses, if you're not familiar, um, so Dave's course, Bulbs, Perennials, Woodies, and More, is a six-week course. And it's about, I'm guessing, 20 hours at least of information but it's broken up into six weeks and each week has three to four hours of all of these little sessions and I mean the way his course is set up it's literally like um, an encyclopedia right that's why we call Dave the walking encyclopedia it's like you just look at the index and it's like tulips that's what I need to order let's go look and see what Dave says about tulips right I mean it just makes it so dadgum simple to just yeah. go in there and focus on it. Um, so Diane it, says it's about looking to your future, have a long-term plan. I totally agree. And that's what it sounds like you're doing, Brenda, is that you're just slowly adding more and more that is going to increase your volume of offering to these wedding florists. Right. And the thing is, his class tells you the varieties to grow. Just because you're going to grow... Um, tulips you got to know what kind to grow and you got to know or what kind of um, um, anything that's that you're going to grow what baptisia for instance the different types of baptisias that's what I'm looking at to grow next year so um, you got to know the varieties the right varieties so that makes a big difference too and so you're not just I mean this is one of the things that Dave and I were talking about this morning we were focusing on um, people, the questions we've been hearing from people like, can I afford to take this class? Well, it's not only how it's going to ramp your business, ramp your volume up so you have more to sell to your customers, but it's also what you shouldn't spend your money on and what you're yeah. talking about, buying the wrong varieties is, yes. it's huge. I mean, yes. and you think you might know, and then you open up a catalog and it's like, oh crap, which one do I get? Exactly. And so time saving, money saving, mm -hmm. focus. If you are looking to expand your business in the shoulder seasons, ramp up your offering. If you're particularly, if you're selling commercially to florist, to um, wedding event people, I mean, the more variety you grow, guess what, friends? They just buy more and more. Have you not found that to be true? Yes. And, and it's, they, they, some are so set in their ways, they don't want to change. But if you kind of introduce it slowly to them, they kind of start accepting it a little bit more. And so it's you kind of have, you have to change their mindset, but it, it may take a while, but it's, it's, it will happen. And, and they will start asking for things now. And they'll say, okay, what, what do you got different this week? I grew Allie and hair this, this year. 
a really funky flower and it was just so fun and once they kind of get their head wrapped around that they'll go for it and and it really makes all the difference in their work as well I totally agree with you. I know that, um, you know, I started flower farming back in the dinosaur ages, right? And so local wasn't even a buzzword back then, 23 years ago. I literally had to train my florist. I never even, I mean, I just went in with samples. And every time I had a new crop coming along, I never sent them a list, unless it was a really common flower like a sunflower. I never sent them a list with the name on there until I had taken them a sample with their last week's order because they really don't know what to do with it. And people, what I think growers need to remember is these commercial people you're selling to, they're having to pay you for every stem. And they're the, one of the greatest value of buying from a local farmer is that their stems last longer, typically, and are in better overall quality than what's shipped in in a box. Right. And so what we grow and what they can get shipped in is totally different. And you mm -hmm. cannot blame them for being hesitant. And so my method of madness in that is I always am trying to find the very earliest I can cut a crop so I can get it visually out there to my mm -hmm. customers when I was doing that. Um, but you are so smart to not overwhelm them. And that's, it's just think about it's like the new kid on the block. They just don't know what to do with it. Right. Right. So that's what I do. I send them something new and say, okay, look, what, do this. And, you know, maybe it doesn't like the cooler. Maybe it's, you know, it's, right. it needs to sit for a little bit or sit in the cooler, but, you know, just play with it and, and just different vines and things like that. They just don't know. And uh, another thing, they don't know what blooms when in their local, you know, environment. So it's just teaching them at that point to, you know, just, just education. It's true. And so Dave's class, which is covers, you know, this list of crops that many of them, I don't know about you, but I mean, most people aren't even aware of so many of the different crops that you can grow. Right. Right. So, you know, it's, um, I just don't even know what else to say. I've talked about this so much, except, <laughs> you know, it's like, you don't want to, I don't want people, I want people to understand that if you're flower farming and that's your gig and you're going to keep going, this is the next step. This will ramp up your business. This will yeah. add to your volume, add to your income, save you money, up your game. And it's for the rest of your life. It is lifetime unlimited access, which means five years from now, you can go back and say, you know what, maybe I do want to grow tulips now. And that happens all the time. Absolutely. Right, Brenda? Yes. yes. I mean, look at me and you. We're, you know, heading into supposedly most people's retirement years, and here we are farming. <laughs> and as you can take little bites of farming and be successful, like learning how do you plant it, and mm -hmm. set it up so it's not going to kill you to take care right. of it. Right. It makes you want to grow something new next year and add it right. in. Right. And that's, that's what it is. So Brenda, overall, you would, what would you say about what Dave's class has done for your business? Well, it's just, it's just given me more variety to offer. Plus I know it's going to come back every year, which is going to save me time without having being out in the field, having to plant everything. Um, I'm, I've started like you did with the tiller and, you know, kind of making my own rows. It takes forever. And so, you know, we've just kind of tried to streamline things. Um, and I think, you know, just taking it a step at a time, just little bits and pieces and learn it and then move to the next step. I'm going to do this. I'm in it for the long haul. You know, I may, you know, I, I, I just want to grow it. I, that's, that's just me. So um, I, I think if you're on the fence about it, I would, if you're really passionate about it, I would, it's very well worth it. Very well yeah. worth it. Totally agree. So friends, the enrollment closes today is June 13th of 2022 and enrollment closes tonight. You know, enrollment opens five days once a year, typically in mid June for Dave's course, because the course starts July 8th and people are like, oh my gosh, in the middle of the season, are you crazy? But that's when you're ordering, that's when you're getting plants in um, to plant and people, this was the number one request, his first class of students asked us, it's like, gosh, 
you know, it's, it's convenient to take it in January, but it's not very helpful. Yeah. Um, you know, because you have to wait almost a whole season before you can apply. You can't really buy stuff in January and February. It's right. too late to order and you're not planting that stuff. So, um, anyway, so the enrollment closes tonight. Enrollment will not be available again until next year in June. And friends, I just say to you, what are you going to do different to grow your business if you don't do mm -hmm. this? Right. And then you have it all winter. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you can listen to the course without watching it, meaning while you're driving down the road, you can listen to it like a podcast. Um, so, Brenda, thank you so much for taking time out of your hot day. <laughs> you're hotter than I am. Well, I'm in and, the air condition now. I'm better. <laughs> yeah, that does make a big difference, doesn't it? It does. So I really me. appreciate you sharing your experience with Dave's course. And I think that hearing firsthand from his students just how helpful the course is. Um, and, you know, everybody I've talked to still hasn't even come close to realizing it all. Do you know right. what I mean? There's so many things you can still yet to grow if you cho so choose to. Mm -hmm. um, and so it just gets better with every each it and every passing year. I agree. I agree. All right, Brenda. Thank, thank you, you so much. And I appreciate you being here with me. It was a pleasure to meet you and tell people you how too. they can tell people how they can connect with you because I look at your Instagram post, your panties are dynamite. They are beautiful. They are beautiful. But I, I did the, the varieties he suggested. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> there, we go. there you it go. It goes back to that. I mean, not what I like, but what sells. And that's what, that was the thing. But I'm on Instagram at natural state flower farm. I'm on Facebook, Natural State Flower Farm, and I have a um, website, naturalstateflowerfarm.com. So I'm on social media a lot. Um, I try to post every day, but, you know, it's sometimes hit and miss. Sure. And so I think the tip that you shared about how you connected with wedding florists in your, y'all, for anybody just joining, this girl only has 75 people in her town. <laughs> <laughs> and she is selling the heck out of her flowers. She connected with Wedding Florist, and she did that through her social media. So go check out um, Natural State Flower Farm on Instagram and Facebook um, and her website, And because she has done a great job of building her business. And so, all right, Brenda, try to stay cool out there okay. in um, Arkansas. Until we meet again, friends, ciao. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye -bye.